Uh, th thank you, Cameron Corley. Uh, the Digital Service Bill, Cameron Corley, supports Ireland's responsibilities to comply uh, with the D EU Digital Service Act, and that has a very high and lofty principle, which is that what is illegal offline will be illegal online also. And um, it, it seems to be a complex bill enough, but there's a number of, of significant um, statutes within it, namely the appointment of Commissioner Naman as the Digital Services Coordinator and Lead Competent Authority for the EU regulation, as well as to provide for the supervisory and enforcement powers, and also a backup the designation of the Consumer uh, Protection uh, Commission as a second competent authority with specific responsibility for online marketplaces under the EU regulation. And beyond that, then, there's a number of others essentially to do with um, intermediary service provision, uh, trusted flagger status, and uh, procedures for dealing with complaints and the user uh, bodies. Um, yeah, it basically says European Commission, US DSA, um, states that the Digital Services Act is set up to create a safer digital space in which the fundamental rights of all users of digital services are protected. So, uh, yeah, high principles, but uh, this is going to be very difficult. And we did, as part of the Enterprise Committee, some pre-legislative scrutiny on this. And one of the first things that came to, to um, be seen was the actual scope of the remit of this Act, and Ireland is going to have to put in a very significant regulatory oversight because we have a number, uh, some of the largest platforms are here in Ireland, um, they're incorporated, they have entities incorporated in Ireland and they come under Irish law as well as EU law, and we are seen to be the first, I suppose, moderating authority to try and, and ensure that they are acting as they are supposed to act. And when we talk about the digital world, Cam Corla, we're talking about a number of different streams of, of, of digital activity. You have online information. You then have the digital marketplace, which we understand all types of commerce, exchange and transactions. You have ostensibly news and media presentation. Some of it is newsworthy, some is not. And then we have social media messaging. And, and this is a massive, we know by the number of users worldwide, the number of people that are interacting every minute of the day online. This is the space we are now trying to uh, provide regulation in. And we do have to do our part in terms of, of having an, an oversight controlled by Europe. That's what we're signed it up to, but it's going to be very difficult. And in terms of managing the message, which is ultimately what we're talking about doing here in a large part, uh, that is being done at the moment by moderators, where platforms have moderators engaged. And we have had moderators into the Enterprise uh, Committee, and they are not actually employees of the platforms, Kevin Corla. They are generally subcontractors who are uh, employed at a remove by the operating platforms. And their job, generally speaking, is to try and take down content that it seemed to be malicious or subversive or just too traumatic to view. And they themselves are being injured as a result of this. This is one of the reasons they came in to talk to uh, the Enterprise Committee, was uh, the trauma that they are suffering. And some are suffering post-traumatic stress, if you can believe it, from looking constantly at unbelievably harrowing imagery and having to decide whether that should remain up or that. And that is only growing because the amount of content that's being generated worldwide is also growing. Um, I think it's also, it's been highlighted here already, the, the ability now of social media messaging and the internet to be used as a communicative and a propaganda tool. And we've seen that in Dublin in recent weeks, how you can stoke up a narrative and uh, put graphics to content and make people believe uh, you know, that something that's taking place is, is something nefarious, which it may or may not be, and allow people to take part in it. And this is not new. We've known about propaganda very much since the First and Second World Wars, but now we are absolutely uh, sending it interstellar, and this is going to be very difficult to control. And I would make a prediction to you, Count Corla, that in the future, you will not be able to read anything on your mobile phone and trust it. You will end up having to go back now to the likes of Reuters, our established news media sites, and anything else that you see, you can just discount it because you cannot trust it. And we've seen just recently how the, the new digital deep fakes, how they have upended elections in other European states, and they're coming here as well. And in actual fact, even last year, I think we have seen one or two of our own um, significant politicians in this country being, having their images usurped in that way. 
So uh, there's a whole really, really difficult body of work. And one other area I'd highlight to you, uh, Corla, is the issue of negative bias. And this is a, uh, a personality trait that human beings have. We are generally more uh, um, minded biologically to notice negative things in our environment than positive. It's probably part of our uh, fight or flight, our survival instinct. But this has been known by uh, the media companies for quite a long time. And it's there for the reason that when you put up negative content or you put up positive content, the negative content is shared, generally speaking, 10 times more often than the positive content. We all know that in life. But the problem with that is it also means that if you're operating a platform and you wish to keep a large number of viewers and subscribers, your algorithms are automatically switched in to observe negative bias in postings because that's what circulates. And so therefore, you know, we have people complaining about their mental health and everything else. I'd say for most people, turn off your bloody phones and, and stop reading what's on them. You might feel a lot better, go out for a walk for yourself, rather than listening to a lot of it. And we're seeing a lot of that it is going to become far more commonplace. We can see it even with what's happening in Gaza and Ukraine at the moment. And it is terrible and very important that those images are circulated, that people know. But there is a lot of disinformation going on there as well, Ken Gordon. So it is important that Ireland does its part here in terms of trying to uh, get on top of this um, really difficult subject and the question here I suppose is going to be one of resourcing on one hand but the second part is going to have to be on regulating all of these online platforms and I would agree with what uh, Deputy Boyd Barrett uh, said and Deputy McGuinness earlier. I think we do need to come up with a digital tax because the costs of trying to implement here are going to be horrendous and we do need to do what the EU is doing, which is right, coming up with you know, uh, very, very significant fines for breaches of data law. And that has to be uh, really implemented in this country. But you will still not be able to get at those who are based overseas and who are promulgating information from overseas. So that is something we'll have to look to. But anyway, I will be uh, supporting this as it moves through the House. Words of wisdom.